Thank God it is Friday. What a great Friday it is, too. Welcome to another episode of 8 Bits version 1.3. I'm DJ Wheat, joined as always by It Me JP. And what a uh, surprise that we have such a great guest to join us this week for 8 Bits. You know, it's been a lot of one player, two player. But we add a third player this week to 8-Bits. We've got Jeff Green, a longtime writer, journalist, an awesome dude in the video game industry. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But Jeff, thanks for joining us, man. We're, hey, we're excited thanks, to have you. Thanks for having me. You guys both know that I watch your show, so I'm I'm honored to be with you guys this morning. Or t this afternoon for you. Yeah, this well, morning for me. It's still the morning for me. Yeah. We was up All at right. like 7 a.m. <laughs> crazy shit, but... It's I've been amazing. I've been pounding coffee this morning just yeah. so I can be coherent with you too. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Maybe thank the, the lack of coherency might you know make things a little bit interesting. Maybe I'll I'm fit sure. in better. We'll yeah. all we'll all wake up I'm sure over the course <laughs> of the, the show. So of course if you never tuned into Eight Bits, hello. Here's our uh, weekly <clears throat> video game discussion show where we talk about a bunch of stuff, what we've been playing, and then hopefully we open up the phone lines to you too. And uh, every once in a while we get to add a special guest to the. Uh, lineup and this week we got Jeff Green. So Jeff, before we really hop into things into our first yes, segment, sir. what we're playing, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are probably going to know you or may realize they know you from uh -huh. this, that, or the other. Hopcap, yep. EA, uh, ZD, one. I mean, all these things. But can yep. you give us the the Jeff Green 101? Like I pick up oh, the pamphlet sure. and I'm going to read. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, sure. Well, actually, I have printed pamphlets. There we go. I'll be mailing to all your viewers. Um, <clears throat> right. So I am Jeff Green. I've been uh, in the video game business here and there for 20 years now. So probably uh, older than some of or longer than some of your viewers are, have been alive, I would imagine. So think of me as like your gaming grandpa, if you've never heard of me before. Um I started uh, at, at uh, Computer Gaming World magazine, which was a uh, a monthly print magazine about PC gaming, and I was there for a good twelve years. Uh, eight of those years as editor in chief. Um, in two thousand and eight, when uh, all the gaming magazines mostly started to go bust, uh, that's when ours went bust. I, but I was also at that time part of One Up, which was. Uh, owned by the same folks that owned Computer Gaming World. So that's around the time I started doing podcasts, podcasting. I had the GFW radio podcast. Um, and uh, I left games journalism for good in 2008, mostly uh, because there weren't any jobs. It wasn't necessarily because I wanted to. This, you know, uh, podcasting and writing and all that has always been my passion. Uh, but I went to EA and I worked on The Sims. Uh, for about a year as a producer until I realized I was utterly unqualified to be a producer of video games. <laughs> I think they, they might have realized it before I did, and then I soon realized it. Uh, I was way better at talking about them and criticizing them than I was at, at making them. So big, big difference in skill sets there. And uh, then I went to work at EA.com where I, I uh, created their first uh, podcast. It was the EA podcast, which I don't think it's still running anymore. Anyway, I did that uh, for about another year, and then I felt like EA was just too big for me. I wasn't used to working for a big corporation like that. I, you know, it was just not a good fit. So I decided to go to PopCap, which is, it was a at that time a small company that I absolutely loved, and I was there for a year. And then, as many people may know, EA bought PopCap, <laughs> uh, so I could not escape. Uh, I'm actually still there, but I, I am legally allowed to say that I am I am on my way out. Uh, uh, all an amicable departure between me and them, uh, and I'm I'm looking for work, uh, Marcus. So feel free to hire me as sure. your assistant slave or something <laughs> heads up all around all around i have to ask you something because um yeah. you know in, in one of the first publications you get you got involved with actually you were involved with non-gaming stuff and uh, then uh, you then you kind of like begged to get into it right or you said yeah, threatened. You're right maybe threatened was was better it was a beg it was okay, a beg okay yeah <laughs> uh, but so cgw like 
I mean, I have fond memories of uh, flipping through uh, the pages of this and, like, you know, making my dream computer and all, like, the little back ads that there were. Sure. But I have to ask you because I don't very often get to uh, reminisce with people about this, but were you into BBSs uh, at all during that time? Like I was, yeah. And, and it's, it's funny to think about that now, right? I mean – Oh, man. I, it, yeah, cause it's really not even that long ago in the relative scheme of things, and yet it seems like a lifetime ago. It seems so yeah. Foreign, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was living in this same house, you know, as I am now, when my only access to, you know, the internet was like CompuServe and other things yeah. like that. Well, here in the Bay Area, I had a 2400 baud modem, you know, I mean, loading a, a JPEG or a photo, not that saying what I would have been about. It would, you know, it would scroll like one pixel line at a time. You'd be hoping maybe you'd see something good, but it would take like 10 minutes. Oh, those are the days. I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I still like to reminisce and, and talk about it every once in a while because, you know, BBSs were sort of my entry into the wonderful world of the internet. And although it was like oh. a small clusters, it's just, I found that whole era fascinating. It, it is fascinating. And I remember like the flame wars I used to be in. And, you know, you sort of, it was like early, you know, early fun, entry man. into that whole thing. And it was actually kind of nice. Cause I felt like I got it out of my system before like the internet became like <laughs> a thing, you know? So by the time all the message boards came around and major websites, I was like, I'm, I'm done with that. Yeah. You know? I, I got the flame wars out of my system. Fought those already. Absolutely. Fought, fought all those fights, yep. console versus PC, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Yep. All right. Awesome stuff. Well, uh, Jeff, thanks again for, for joining us. We're going to jump thanks, right Jeff. into uh, right into our first segments, and uh, that's where we kind of talk about what we've been playing and what we're excited to play. And who wants to kick off this week? JP, <laughs> you, you kind of like walked through some doors that you've never walked through before. Maybe Maybe we need to start with you. Yeah, I guess I, I think I think we've all been playing it, or or maybe this is the podcast where we try to convince Jeff that he doesn't want to buy it. I think is what we, <laughs> we decided on. Uh, so I I jumped in. I guess a little backstory. I've never played a Pokemon game before. Um, oh wow! I've always known what they are. I've always I I've watched. I've dabbled in the anime once or twice on uh, what was that Fox? Well, I forgot what <laughs> network that was even on back in the day when I was a kid, but. I never got around to playing it. I, I I didn't like Pokemon. I wasn't a Tamagotchi person. I always just ignored mm -hmm. that shit. And for whatever reason, last Friday week, you started talking about Pokemon. I got into the hype because I saw every person in the world getting into the hype, how they were going <laughs> to these uh, launch events and whatnot. And um, it, it struck 11 o'clock, and it went live on the eShop. And I was like, okay, let's. <laughs> you got me. I don't have to go anywhere. It's 40 bucks. Let's download it. And I downloaded Chips. Pokemon X, and I, I don't know how I feel about it. It's all right. I for some reason I I thought it was going to be harder. Like there's hmm. there's not really like a challenge. I, I'm only I, I think you'd like judge how far you are in the game by how many badges you have. I've only got the first badge. I'm at the second. Uh, what is it? The second gym, or whatever. It I'm learning does all get harder. Technology. I'm not playing the new one, but I've played them before, and yeah. they, it does get harder. Yeah. Okay. I mean, because like. I, I love the idea of first badge not, is like the tutorial JP. So sure, like, sure, on. no, totally, totally, totally. Like I get, uh, I, I love the fact that there are what like six hundred Pokemon now or some crazy number that I don't even understand how you can like capture all of those. Even though that's probably one of the goals of a lot of people playing it, but I like the fact that you can get a Pokemon and it, you can evolve it and like they're very dick teasy about like the evolution system because it's at first like this outline of what it's going to look like and you're like oh shit how's it going to be colored like what's the how's, what's it going to look like and i love that i love that aspect of it and i love like that you can evolve to other stuff but i don't know like the combat just seems so simple and everything about that game seems weird to me like i was i was fucking petting my pokemon that's like an actual thing you do in that game is you like rub its chin and it makes you or you make it like you more I think that's new, isn't it? Yeah, isn't I, I, I've heard that's new. And I was just like, this is, I guess, I guess I'll keep doing this for like 20 <laughs> minutes, but I feel really awkward about so it. So it actually has a gameplay effect if you do that? Yeah, like they, 
from my simple understanding of it, there, I was also just bombarded with a ton of information about right. this game yeah. as you play, and there's really no, there's no tutorial to it. It's just kind of find out what you can do as you play the game. At least for me, it was, um, mm. and I, I think it increases their happiness rating, which happiness rating I think correlates to if they're going to evolve at some levels. Huh. I, I'm not too wow. sure. I'm sure a lot of people are like getting. He's so wrong about Pokemon. You're supposed to do it. I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> look, guys. I'm per- I'm first entry it into right. it. Um, but, but I don't. I think where it really comes down to is the fact that, uh, and I bought the 3DS on this show on like our second episode, I think, or third episode is when I went and bought it. And I've never really been a big handheld guy. And part of the reason is that I don't have like a place to. Pl- I don't travel. Like I, I mm-hmm. my travel on a day-to-day basis is me getting out of bed, walking 10 feet down the hall, taking a left into another room and sitting down to work. Like that is mm-hmm. my, JP, my traveling. That's a nice life. Yeah. Well, I, I'm very lucky to be able to do that. Right. But I, I, if I go somewhere, I'm going to drive, like there's no public transportation here in Dallas. So, but what if about I'm like playing in bed though, for example, I would rather like watch a movie or something okay. or, or watch mm-hmm. Netflix on my iPad. So like mm-hmm. I'm sitting here and I'm playing my 3ds at my desk and I'm like looking at all these different other like, I have like two streams open. I've got like Twitter open over here and like Skype, and I'm like sensory overload. Fuck, I don't want to play this game. Like I want to go talk on there. So I, I think I just have an issue with handheld systems in general. Mm-hmm. For my purpose is like I don't have the, I don't have not the time like the the best place. I don't have like a met. I don't. I'm not on a, a train thirty minutes out of the day or whatever to mm-hmm. play it. So JP. What's up? There's a book I want to tell you about. Oh this, yeah, what's this a book? book? This book is titled "Everybody," or excuse me, "Everyone Poops." <laughs> <laughs> okay. And and the reason I want to tell you about it is because you have to really understand that the DS is like you know the most powerful pooping system ever. It's like that's what it's that's what it's meant for. So maybe you just need to take that DS and put it next to your toilet. See, and then you know, not getting I, into too much detail. I get out of the bathroom really quick, Marcus. I don't, <laughs> all right, I go in, do my business, and I'm out. All right, all right. Very seldom that I'll bring like, I should bring an iPad into the bathroom today, or else the internet while I'm taking a shit. That's it's pretty funny, just because I have to pull my eight year old out of the bathroom because I think I have given him bad habits. I'm like, hey, Minnie. Have you fallen in there? Like, it's been 20 minutes now. Come on. <laughs> I mean, I've seen the rings around his legs and butt from just sitting on the... Anyway, that's that's maybe... The, but I understand, JP, in all seriousness, because I typically only break out my hand holes these days when I am traveling, which, you know, has not been as much this year, but yeah. that's when I busted out my Vita the most. That's when my DS has come out the most. So I understand... Mm-hmm. That whole process, that whole thought of like, I'm just being overloaded by so much other stuff. Mm-hmm. How can I, you know, when you're eight, well, of course, that makes total sense. You feel like sure. the coolest dude in the world with something like that mm-hmm. in your hand. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. But Jeff, you said you, you know, you like play in bed. Is that pretty common or is that something um, you do? Or? Well, I, I only bought the 3DS fairly recently. I, I bought it for Animal Crossing, the last thing That's I what got, got me. I think I actually hyped. tweeted at you like, yeah, you should buy it for Animal Crossing. Cause you were yeah, I think I remember that now. And then I did, and I played it as long as everyone else did and then forgot about it like everyone else did yep. shortly thereafter. Uh, but I don't regret the 3DS. And, in fact, right now I'm, I'm playing through Link's Awakening again. Um, uh, and it's such a great nostalgia trip on that. But, yeah, but about the 3DS in general, I mean, I do I, – I, I use it on the couch and I use it in bed. Um, and the only bad thing about it is right now it's replaced uh, – and I feel terrible about it, but it's replaced my book reading. So mm-hmm. because often, you know, when I'm – it's sort of like you. I mean, I have the exact same kind of sensory overload. I'm on my iPad. I'm on my laptop. I'm, I'm doing this and that. And then it's at the point where I, I want like a couch or bed break or it's, or it's actually time for bed in the past. Like that's where I'm getting out my, you know, non-digital book and reading. But ever since I bought the 3DS, it's like, OK, now I'm going to do this kind of gaming. I'm going to do the kind of gaming where I can just lay down uh, and, and do this, you know. Um, so I'm a huge fan of it. And also, you know, while I was a pop cop, of course, I did a 
tremendous amount of travel. Mm. So um, before I had the 3DS, I was using my old Game Boy, and I was using my uh, actually my iOS devices for gaming. So I, I am used to mobile gaming a lot. Um, <clears throat> I could tell you that I did play uh, Pokemon. Uh, I, it was either red or blue at the time, the very first one back in the day. And whenever that was, I was already relatively you know old for especially for a game like Pokemon. <laughs> And I remember I was uh, in Berkeley where I live. I was on the street uh, in front of a movie theater. My wife and kid were going to meet meet me, and we were going to go see uh, whatever movie it was. It, my, my daughter was young at the time, so it was probably a, a Disney-type movie where the parents get killed or something, Some something heartwarming like, <laughs> like Disney always does. You have to console your kid afterward. Um, but anyway, I was waiting for my wife and kid to show up, and I, I was playing Pokemon. It was probably Red on my DS. And Was it DS at the time, or it might have been original Game Boy Advance. I don't remember. Yeah, somebody in your chat probably yeah. knows. I think. Anyway, I think so so yeah, might have been the GBA. So I was uh, I was just standing on the street there playing Pokemon, having a great time, and this mom and her son walk by on the sidewalk, and the son looks like he's maybe about six years old, and he's looking at me, and as they walk by, he's still turning around and looking back at me, and still in earshot, the kid says to his mom, "Mom, is that a kid?" <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome that felt kind of terrible um so i haven't bought the new one yet but i was telling you guys before you turn on the camera i was gonna buy it on air but now my 3ds is dead so i i can resist yeah. the impulse buy um it's also a big download it, it's uh i want to say it's oh, like yeah. seven gigs or something wow Whoa. Which is crazy big and, you it, know, it's like 1600 blocks or whatever Nintendo oh. uses to measure its. Well, for some reason, they good. fucking made up. Let's use blocks. Everyone likes blocks. We'll just measure yeah, game size that and that. Yeah. By the way, Jeff, I was hoping you were going to tell the end of that story. Of the uh, the kid story. Yeah, yeah. You know, when when he said that to his mother, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flipping the bird. <laughs> and you flip yeah. the bird. It's actually, like... actually, I I think I said I think I actually said something. So it's like, no, I'm a I'm a grown up, and his mom sort of like shuffled the son away. Like I was, <laughs> Horrible predator or something. I felt terrible. I'm like, no, no, my daughter's coming here. I'm not an awful man. That's the other but, weird thing with the game, man. Like, I, I started out, and I, I didn't understand like how fights occurred. I thought it was like random battles uh, mm -hmm. that happened, and like just walking in the straight line. All of a sudden, this kid comes like charging off the side of the screen and runs into me, and it's like preschooler Jaina challenges to a battle. I'm like. Why the fuck am I fighting a preschooler? <laughs> what is this? Yeah, it kind of reminds you what the demographic is. Yeah, it, felt, it was really weird. It was really but, weird. But, you know, when the first Pokemon, the reason I played it at that time was because it was a huge phenomenon, of course, with the very first game, and I was hearing about it all the time, and I was running a PC gaming magazine, but it was impossible to ignore the cultural phenomenon. So I bought it, and and I was actually really impressed because it's a fairly deep... RPG in a way, or at least it was at the time. I don't. I don't know how it ranks relatively now in the in the current version. But at that time, you know, it, it really did. There was a lot to learn, and there was a lot of actual real strategy involved in pairing up your Pokemon against the opponent's Pokemon. You know, right. it really did involve some good strategic thinking in, in terms of how to win these battles, especially later in the game. So as a as a gamer and as a guy who loves RPGs. It really did appeal to me strictly on a gameplay level. And so the, yeah. the column I ended up writing about it was like, don't think of this as like a kid's game and you you sure. are some sort of mental midget if you're a grown-up and you buy it. It's actually a real game from a gameplay perspective. And I assume it still is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's totally, in terms of like the combat and everything, that, that's still there to this day. I, I have no idea of like... I have a simple understanding, a very basic understanding of like the different counters and, and what type counters what other type to some degree um and i assume that only gets more and more crazier as you get higher yeah. in levels or whatever mm -hmm. um i just haven't put that i've put maybe like seven hours into a total which is a lot for a handheld for me so i guess that says something about the game yeah mm -hmm. jeff i think to to kind of speak to what you said is i think what it did is it made it made rpgs a little bit more accessible Right, because yeah. they were still mm -hmm. kind of they were still kind of <laughs> loved by a very specific group of people. But then Pokemon right. came and introduced a lot of the same things that we were familiar mm -hmm. with mechanic wise with, with mm -hmm. RPGs and just kinda of made it, you know, in a cute, fun mm -hmm. and, and different and I mm -hmm. think that did a lot for it. Now, 
by right. by measurement, I would say that it remains still an accessible system, and it's sort of as deep as you want it to be. If my seven-year-old right. son never wants to know about the weaknesses of this Pokemon mm -hmm. versus that one, they don't need mm -hmm. to. But, sure. of course... <laughs> The kids do know all that shit. So right. I mean, they know more than than yeah. Right. So it is, and, and it's, I think it's like yeah. an RPG trainer, yeah. Right, and I think it does also appeal to that you know sort of uh, obsessive collector instinct that so many of us oh, have yeah. in totally. this culture, right? You know, like wanting to catch them all is is like a, a super obsessive thing to get into. Yeah, yeah. I'm more obsessed, like I said, with the evolution of stuff like. Mm -hmm. I've potential, or I've uh, not potentially, but I, I've stayed away from these websites that show you like the first stage, the second stage, and then like their mega evolution, which I think is the yeah. new thing and the, the big thing in the series. Just because I I'm interested in like finding that out on my own, yeah, which sure. is which is kind of interesting. So you're gonna what? keep playing it, JP? I'll I'll probably keep playing it. I've got a bunch of flights coming up in November, um, so I'll have <laughs> a good amount of time to play okay. it then. I'll look like that fucking weirdo on the plane. <laughs> He's got yeah. a scraggly beard. He's like, fuck, Charizard just died. <laughs> <laughs> and There's goes, a point at which you have to get over it, you know? I mean, yeah, that's sort yeah, of one yeah. good thing about about continuing to age is, like, you start caring less about that. Oh, I used, yeah. to, I'm, I'm I used to be more self-conscious about it, you know, about, like, I'm an adult playing what other people are perceiving as, as kiddie toys. And now I'm just like, fuck you, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. But what but you're doing isn't any more adult than I am if you're reading 50 shades of gray or whatever. The day I started playing D and D on a stream in front of a thousand people, I was just like, yep, I have no self-respect anymore. I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm role playing. In front of I counter that. It's an incredible self-respect. That's what it actually is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, Pokemon X, I'll, I'll probably keep playing it. So what's the difference between, I know there's always a difference and it's usually just whatever, the unique Pokemon are. Is there it's any the other same. difference between X and Y? It's, it's the, the same, same thing. Yeah, it's just different Pokemon, as far as I've understood. Yeah, I looked at a chart like show, showing which ones you get with each yeah. game, and okay. Mega Charizard X or whatever looked cooler than the biggest Y creature. I was like, yeah, let's, let's go with that okay. one. That's yeah, because I asked on or I mentioned on Twitter this morning that I was thinking of buying it, and then all of a sudden people are like, you got to get X, and other people, you got to get Y. Of course. Like, yeah. And they're being really you like... You got to get both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, no, I actually, I don't. It probably doesn't matter, right? No. Yeah, because you can trade the Pokemon regardless, with because sure. there is like the online component to it. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, I imagine that's probably a lot better than it was Back in Pokemon sure. uh, it's Red actually, days, the yeah, online rating. You can, like, when you get into the game, it'll ask you, like, do you want to connect to the Internet, blah, blah, blah. And um, eventually, after you go through a couple little screens, it, I think it's showing you people that are near you in the game. Wow. And it just, like, scrolls like, constantly like, on the bottom. I'm you sorry? Mean, like, graphically near you? No, 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 like in the where you're at in the game. Oh, 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 I see, in the game. And it, it, it'll scroll like 50 or 60 names, and there's a ton of like Japanese characters. There's a lot of Spanish. Like it looks like a good uh, majority of people on there. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was just like it was just more information that I was like, God, there's way too much <laughs> shit going on in this yeah. game. I don't understand anything. <laughs> so I just went back to like petting my Pokemon for like 10 minutes because I understood how to do that. Do so, you yeah. guys see any of the Pokemon movies? Maybe the first one. I maybe watched like ten minutes of one once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just just curious. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I was wondering if you're gonna follow. I'm a huge fan, well, you guys, and I right just... because they are classics of of American cinema. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, Japanese cinema. Yeah. Um, no, I did. I went to the first one with my daughter because. Yeah, because she was in, she wasn't into the game, but she was into the creatures, you know. Because at the time she was like whatever six seven year old girl, mm -hmm. um, but I so I went to the theater on a Saturday morning, and the theater was full, and it was all kids and dads, and all the dads were asleep. It was, <laughs> it was awesome, including me. Like I remember, like uh, uh, like waking up and seeing other dads next to me snoring. Pika, pika. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I want to jump in here, so I I don't. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on this because uh, I'm not all the way through. But one of the things I want to bring up about it is something I'm curious, and that's The Wolf Among Us. Of course, this is a new Telltale game by the same folks that brought us The Walking Dead of the same type. Um, and this one stays true to the lore, unlike The Walking Dead that focuses on new characters. This one focuses on characters within the Fables universe. The thing that's really 
like I'm I'm loving it so far, and I'm gonna be playing it uh, on the stream. But the thing that like immediately pops in the head, like first off, you guys did both of you play The Walking Dead? Oh yeah, okay, yes. yeah, so, loved it. As well. You know, I I I believe that a lot of the decisions that you made really did affect the story and and eventually in the story how the characters did you know interact with you and what you did end up seeing and while there is some of that in uh the wolf among us like the weight of things is much different than it is in the walking dead where you're like i'm in a fucking apocalypse and i could just say something wrong to this guy and he could open up a hole in the wall and let zombies in and we all die versus like well, I know that Bigby Wolf is never going to die because he's like a main character in the in fables, right? So, mm -hmm. like logically you just have So, it's just interesting mm -hmm. because it's still the great, you know, it's still a great story, it's still the same mm -hmm. great gameplay, but that whole concept of like weight and, and on your decisions and what you decide to do and how you decide to act, I feel like that's not quite as there as what is is in The Walking Dead. Does that make does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I thought that was like the first bit of genius of The Walking Dead game was that they chose not to use the characters from the mm -hmm. TV show, right? It opened them up to create their own uh, storyline and their own fiction. And exactly what you said, in which we don't really know what the fate of any of these characters are, and the fate is in our hands. Like it was sort of disconcerting, I think, in the very first part of Walking Dead. It was like, well, wait a minute, where is where are the people I'm used to from the comic book or the or the movie? But right. it become or the TV show. Sorry, but it becomes clear that that was the right creative decision very early yeah. on. I think. And Definitely. Uh, someone in chat says, you know what? Finish the game and you won't feel the same, which I respect that. And obviously this mm -hmm. isn't something where I'm like, well, I'm right. not going to play this because I don't <laughs> feel the same way. But mm -hmm. to reinforce what I'm saying, like. I, I have 139 issues of fables. Like, I've read every single one of them almost twice. Like, I know a lot of shit that happens to a lot of these characters. So, immediately, I know X is never in danger because mm -hmm. X is a part of it. So, that's what I'm talking about versus exactly what Jeff said, where when you have new people and you're making new connections, you have no preconceived notion of what could <laughs> happen to these characters. Mm -hmm. And that's what made the game so great is because, mm -hmm. one second, now they do introduce a lot of new folks, which is great, and I like that. And, and okay. I'm definitely going to be finishing it. So, I'll take your word for it, Leo friend. I really hope that that's <laughs> the case. But uh, because I know so much of the lore... It, it does sure. feel different, and we'll see yeah. how, how it goes. I, I'll have it finished by next week. And you're, you're definitely like a unique uh, Probably, right? situation. You know? right. You, you've read a lot of it. But ha have they said, like, are they going to follow the story to, like, exactly how it happened in the comic? Have they spoken about that the, at all? The interesting thing about the fable lore is that, first off, this takes place like really early on in the story, really well, early course, on yeah. in the story. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really have any risk of revealing anything other than these characters are prominent in this universe. However, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that they refer to in the comic that I guarantee you would just make amazing games where you like mm -hmm. sort of know of these events that take place, but they've never actually done issues on them, right? You just hear about all these great feats that happen here or there. So I hope that with the success of this, that they fill yeah. in some of the holes that they've built with the comic as a, as a result. I mean, that would just be mm -hmm. like total nerdgasm in terms of like <laughs> completing the whole fanboy circle. Uh, and, and that just makes me super excited. So Are they only doing five mm -hmm. episodes of, of uh, whatever it's called? I like, forgot the name for some uh, reason. Uh, of this one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Wolf Among Us. So, yeah, yeah five yeah, of yeah. this, and then they'll see where it goes. But I just okay. have this <laughs> feeling that... It's also you know, the first episode, too. Like, yeah, I'm trying yeah, to think what right. big drops happened in The Walking Dead right. in the first episode. But it's been so long since I played that. It's all just kind of mm -hmm. in one thing. That That's where you, like, go to the... I think you go to, like, spoilers. You go to, like, the gas station or whatever, and you meet that crew in the first episode of Walking Dead. If I remember correctly. No, I... You, like, don't you? No, you I don't just meet Clem. Well, you meet you meet Clem, and then the two of you like end up at the gas station. But then the gas station's episode two. Maybe? Oh, I feel right. Like gas station right. was not episode one. I don't think it was. Yeah, maybe maybe it's it at the either. end. That's like the big reveal. And I, I've the heard that story. at the end of Big Bad Wolf, that there is kind of like an oh shit moment, and that's 
where they kind of leave off. At least that's what uh, I think Dodger was saying. That you mean episode? You mean like the final? The no, final no, like episode? episode one of the Big oh, Bad Wolf. Gotcha, like at the gotcha. end, there's like a something happens, and everyone is like, "That was crazy." Blah blah blah. Okay. So yeah. I haven't played it yet. I, I definitely intend to. Yeah, me neither. Um, yeah. But I, I haven't decided yet if I want to jump in now or wait till all the episodes are out. I'm still kind of on the fence about that. I understand. I, understand. I jumped in about halfway through Walking Dead, and it was incredibly annoying when I would finish something and I had to wait months to play the next episode. Yeah, it I was nice to wait till it was done. I mean, I actually played the first, I think, the first two on time, and then I waited for it to finish, and it felt great. It's kind of like binging on a Netflix show yeah, or something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So. I'll uh, I will be giving away a few copies of a Wolf Am- or the Wolf Among Us on Sunday oh. <laughs> during giveaway. So three I was calling copies, it the so. Big Bad Wolf. Great, the Big Bad Perfect. Wolf. Well, a Big B is the Big Bad Wolf. So, um, so here on this channel Sunday we usually do giveaways around 6 p.m. EST, but uh, we'll be giving away three copies of that, and it's great. Um, loving it so far. Can't wait to play more. What else you got, Jeff? What have you been playing, man? Well, uh, see, I mentioned Link's Awakening uh, on the 3DS, which is one of my favorite Zeldas. And uh, I, I don't know how much of the Zelda series you guys have played or if you played all of, all of them, but, like, Jesus, I forgot how hard this one is. Uh, relatively hard, you know? Like, I played it at least once before, and I'm, I'm in dungeons where I can't remember now how I beat them, <laughs> you know? And I've already beat it. So I've actually had to go through, uh, look at a couple online walkthroughs just to just to keep going, you know, which is such a shameful thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> because in the old days, I would pride myself with not cheating. You know, it was harder to cheat back then, too, but still. Sure. Um, so so that's been a blast. Um, and you're playing the else? DS remake, right? It's the DS remake. Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, what, what was it called? Like Link's Awakening. I think it's DX or something. Was it? Okay. Like Deluxe or something. Maybe that's what it's yeah, yeah. for. Link, Link's Awakening DX. That's what that's it is right now. Yeah. On the, Great uh, game. And it's game super cheap on the uh, eShop. So that's actually why I bought it. I was looking for a couple cheap DS, uh, DS, uh, 3DS games. That and SteamWorld Dig. And SteamWorld Dig is actually on sale now, I, I was told, uh, at the eShop. And if you haven't played that, that's a super great game. Which one? Uh, it's it's called SteamWorld Dig. Yeah. And oh, right. It, I've yeah, heard about it, that. I, I've, yeah. I haven't played it yet, but I know it's what it is. It's something between like uh, like um, Terraria and uh, God, I don't know. It, it's a really hard game to describe, but it's super fun. Basically, Metroid. You're just, you're a lot just, of people Metroid. Say Metroid. Yeah, yeah, it's like a Metroid. Yeah, that's right. It's like a Metroid Terraria combo where you're you're digging down and uh, there's enemies to encounter and there's some puzzles to solve. Just and, and, oh, and the aesthetic of it is. You're a robot. All the characters are robots, but it's set in the Wild West. So it's sure. like a Wild West robot universe. So it's a really cool looking. How far yeah. are you in that? I finished it. Oh, okay. art sweet. I, yeah, I, I was told it. that, uh, or I, I think I was listening to the Giant Bombcats. They, yeah. I think Brad, they were all kind of playing it. And they said, like, maybe halfway or like 75% of the way through the game, it gets really annoying and challenging. Or not, a, I don't want to say something that they didn't say but it was it was a different gameplay experience than what the, kind of the first half or the first it gets, three it fourths gets of the harder, game but they do you know you, you can you can uh uh warp back to the top right mm-hmm. and at the top you can that's where you're const on the surface level you're constantly going to the shops and buying yourself new upgrades and new tools like stronger digging tools or whatever and you can also buy teleportation devices that you can plant strategically as you're going down so that you don't have to climb all the way back up and down. Because if you have to do that, the game gets really annoying. Sure, uh, sure. You know, because you're just spending all your time backtracking over shit that you did. So if you learn to do play it sort of the right way, those sort of annoying things don't happen as much. It is, it's, it gets hard. It gets, it's deceptively easy at the beginning, and then by the end, I found it hard. But I did keep going because I thought it was so it's so cool looking. It's such a, a great achievement for a, a, a small studio, too. Yeah, so I do highly recommend that one. Um, the other game that I started obsessing over the last uh, few weeks, out of the blue, uh, and it's like way late to the party for a lot of people, probably especially for a lot of people on Twitch, is uh, League of Legends. So I, I was a, a very latecomer to that game, um, mostly because I was terrified. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was terrified of, of the online experience. How has the online experience been for you? I'm very interested to see. 
like in your games uh, it's your... been uh, i'll tell you it's been surprisingly good really? I, I would say it's been about good 80 percent friendly and 20 percent total dicks you know and i that's a better ratio than i was expecting you yeah know? like um you know every time i i'm level 11 now so for context which is still relative newbie you know like i only have like three or four champions that i even have a slight clue how to play sure um, and it's all that's sort how of, you got to start man yeah and for the most you know so when i'm when i'm going into games i've done a lot of uh, co-op games with bots right uh just because you know i didn't want to be in team games where i knew i was going to get yelled at yeah that's and, uh, yeah. And, and also i knew that uh, just from reading up that that's how a lot of people test out new champions right is play against bots and sort of figure out the mechanics and in, in those i'm self-selecting like beginner matches so in general most people in those maps tend to be sure. relatively chill yeah but there have been at least a few times and these are bot maps in fact the games that i've played pvp oh man have actually not been as hostile there's been some hostility but the sure. most hostile experiences i've had have actually been in bot matches where you know there was one game where i was playing uh <laughs> i was playing Aaron. right i now i was the tank i was the top lane tank Sure. And these guys were just like heckling me the whole time, and then they started talking about me like in front of, like in the chat window, like I wasn't there. They were like, "Look at this one, <laughs> it's, look at this," one. you know. And I'm like, "I'm fucking right here." For oh, one. And then I was actually started typing to them, saying like, "You know, <laughs> if my gear sucks, why don't you tell me what to buy? Because we're on the same team, and I don't sure. know how to play, which is why we're in a beginner's lane right. match." And if you're so awesome, why are you in the beginner's match? Why don't you go play with the fucking experts, big the shot? The seeds have been planted, <laughs> Jeff Green. They have hey, been planted. Like, if you're so great, why are you here? In fact, what I think is you actually suck in real life compared to the real players, and you're just here so you could be big man on campus with a bunch of newbies. So, you know, screw yes. you. Let you know, it flow wait, through wait, you, Jeff. <laughs> like 30 miles in this game, then then we can play. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. Now, uh -oh. uh, Jeff, is this like, you Great know, because... through, yeah. Is this your first uh, game of this type, like MOBA of this type? My first MOBA, yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. I haven't played MOBAs, but I'm an, you know, I'm an old-school RTS veteran, so... Right. So that's why the gameplay always intrigued me. I always wanted to do these. Of course, I knew what Defense of, uh, Defense of the Ancients was. You know, I played all the Warcrafts obsessively. I used to play Warcraft 2 online back when that was barely even possible. Right. <laughs> Age of Empires, all those games. And, and I was pretty good, you know. Um, I was great, but I could hold my own. And so I really wanted to play these. But all I ever heard all the time was, you're going to get, you know, you're just going to get reamed not just in terms of game, like you're probably going to lose badly, but also people are going to heckle you and give you shit all the time. So I, I did the online tutorials for both uh, Dota and League of Legends, but when it would get to that inevitable point, inevitable point of, okay, now the next step is you have to play online. Mm. I would just not do it because I didn't want to go through that kind of, you know, mental anguish. Um, and, you know, I, I used to play online all sorts of games um but over time you know with age i sort of aged myself out you know both in terms of switch skills and just my tolerance for wanting to be you know called names and whatever it's like okay i'd rather do something else with my life than being called uh you know junior high names here um and so and you know my, i think I, I basically quit online around the time the counter strike got really big um i was really into death matching and basically here's what it is once online gameplay started being team-based, that's about when I quit. Because getting yelled at by your own teammates is just, like, not fun. Yeah, it's you not know? fun. Back exactly. when it was more one-on-one, -on -one, I felt like, okay, the only person I'm disappointing is myself. So no one's going to really yell at me, right? Yeah. If, if they're beating me, they're just happy they're beating me. Sure. You know, so they're not going to yell at me. And if I'm, if I'm losing, you know, I'll be mad at myself, but I don't have anyone else saying, like, you fucking idiot, don't you know how to shoot? Or that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know? And that's what that's what all that was to me. And um, my my best discovery in League of Legends so far has been because um, I think it, it 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 matches you relative level, right? Like when I'm doing PvP. Oh yeah, 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 yeah level for sure. Their matchmaking people, system's very good. 
And yeah. Cool. And what I've really, what's kept me going and what's making me not quit, even if there's like dicks in there, is that I can hold my own. Like, I'm like, okay, relative to these guys, I don't totally suck. Like, I'm able to get kills. Like, I can see guys doing like really stupid shit that I've learned how not to do already. So it's making me feel like I have a chance. Sure. And uh, and I know this is probably old news to you guys too, but I just find that the the whole meta game around this like so ingenious in a way. I, I I think it's so awesome that everyone starts at level one at the beginning, right? I mean, your summoner is a certain level, but it's a very even playing field when the as soon as the game starts, right? So that that means you it has actually carried on the stick mentality to yeah. it. So there's always something more. Yeah. There is a possibility that you can hang. Like you're not just going to get slaughtered from minute one, like in a game like Counter Strike. You you can be relatively inexperienced, and if you if you learn the basic skills, you can hang. So what do you what do you think about now the explosion of? I mean, you you've seen this happen so many times. You know, we've actually mentioned this previously on the show. FPS games. Once Quake and Doom and all these games came out, it was like, blah, FPS games. MMOs, World of Warcraft, blah, MMOs. Same yeah. thing now. Dota 2, League of Legends, Han, blah, everyone wants to make a MOBA. Uh, mm. What do you think about this? Because, uh, you know, obviously they're big games, but yeah. uh, it, I'm curious. It's, to, yeah. it's weird to me, this one. It's weird. Uh, not Did bad. it blew up so big? Or? Yeah, I would never predicted it in a million years. I was the same it, way. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't have up. taken that bet at all. And, and because this seems particularly hardcore, you know, like death matching, other things that have blown up, like, like you're mentioning, MMOs, you know, little kids can play World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I guess little kids play these games too, or young, young teens or whatever. But it's a, this is a really hardcore kind of game. The, the entire setup around it, everything about it really requires like some pretty, pretty decent gaming knowledge and time yeah. investment as well. Like you cannot get good at this game without investing like, what, hundreds of hours? Yeah, by the time you hours? hit 30, you, you have, a, I would say, a pretty simple understanding of the game at that point. <laughs> right, a simple understanding. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's at least uh, like forty hours probably worth of gameplay. I think one to thirty, rough estimate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you know, if the, you're winning. The, so my my awareness of this as a phenomenon, I knew it as a game, and I actually remember being at PAX. I don't know if you you guys remember the very first time that that those guys were at uh, that Riot showed the game publicly, and they were in a little tiny. A little yeah. tiny booth. They looked like one of those just like sad little indie things, you know, where they were like yeah. begging people. They were passing out the beta cards, and <laughs> so, and I was just like, man, this looks like a really sort of pathetic Warcraft Three clone. It looked bad back then as well. Like yeah, the, the and art and style of the game was different. Blow up this way, and, and the first time that I was aware that it was a phenomenon, it was 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 at PAX a couple years later, when I just walked by a room and it was full of people. Just sitting on the floor watching a match. That was that. That was actually right before the big blow up in season two, right? Two packs. That's well, right. two years in Seattle. Two right? years ago, yeah. yeah. That's right. And I was like, "What? Why? All these people are sitting down <laughs> watching other people play? Like it would blew me away." So now that you've I... played, do you do you connect with that a little bit more? I do. I you do. watched I, the World Finals, right? Because I, I remember you tweeting. Finals. Were you I playing did. prior to that, or did that make you play the game when you were watching the Season it was 3 really Finals? It was simultaneous. It was happening at the same time. Okay. Watching them play was making me want to play, but, but playing was making me understand what they were doing. And mm -hmm. then watching what they were doing was making me want to go back and try out those things. You know, I, I liken it a lot to, and this is not a new observation, but it's really like to professional athletes, right? It's like you can you can see it's something that you can you can aspire to if you understand the rules and th they're so godlike at what they do. You know, it, it kind of inspires you in a way. I mean, I was really learning even the most basic things. Like what I wasn't understanding at first, which is obvious, is like you really have to do this kind of dance, right? You have to like you go in, you come back, you go, you know, you do that thing, and you're like constantly sort of running away and getting in one hit and then running back. Which when I was new seemed like kind of like, frankly, like sort of like a pussy way to play. Like I'm gonna hit you, <laughs> right, right, back and and let my health go back up, then hit you again. But then when I was watching the pros, it's like, oh well, that's that's how you do it. I wasn't being a, a wuss. That's actually how how they do it. 
So I was learning basic uh, gameplay things. But but then watching the worlds, I actually made my wife come and sit down and, and, and watch it because it just blew me away <laughs> to see these gigantic crowds of yeah. people watching a video game yeah. turn it. Like, just as someone who, who is older, like, never in my imagination back in the day could I have, would I have predicted that they could fill the Staples Center, which is where the fucking L.A. Lakers play. You would have said, no fucking way, right? We, yeah. I think me and Marcus would have both said no fucking way a year or two ago. Even just a like, year or two ago, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't really start blowing up till around two years ago. And then we realized that, like, this League of Legends thing is actually going to take off, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. We just have to kind of jump on the train and, <laughs> jump on and the watch train. it go, yeah. Yeah, what uh, I do wonder is, like, are they going to hit a critical mass, though, where it's not going to grow? Because I, I do know when I started watching the world, so back back when I was still only, like, level one or two, I did not understand what the hell these the, the announcers, the commentators were talking about. It was all gibberish to me, you know. <laughs> right. Only here did I understand. So I wonder, like, how are they going to break out beyond the the already converted? You know, you, you can't get your average gamer who doesn't know how to play a MOBA to sit down and watch a League of Legends tournament. I don't think and know what the hell's going on. Well, so this actually brings up, uh, and we'll just we'll we'll touch on this really quick because I know we have a few more before the top of the hour. But this is great anyway. So the thing is, like. Nowadays, people sit down, you put an FPS in front of them, they got a pretty general like, yeah, okay, okay, it's an FPS, I know how to Click play this, shoot, you know, yeah. same thing with like a fighting game or an MMO, like there's now ingrained in our gamer DNA is the ability to mm -hmm. play these. I feel mm -hmm. like with all these games, like it is opening up the acceptance and the willingness to play a game that's a little bit more complex than what's been accepted in the past, and I'm actually all all for that uh right. because i think it's it, it'll hopefully mean that you know people won't shy away from making something that might be perceived as you know, too complex or not necessarily accessible to everyone because it shows it's something that complex or that in-depth can be accessible to everyone and can in fact be called the largest video game in the world which i think is is pretty crazy but yeah, cool. So you aspire for thirty, and then you're gonna. I aspire for thirty, and then well, actually, a lot of people and... are telling me like, you know, go play Dota because that's like the grown up game. Uh, but what you want, people... man. I know, I know. I I don't know why I started on League, but I, but I did. Um, the other observation I was gonna make was that um, watching the watching the worlds, I realized like there's an entire new profession that has opened up here, which is not, I don't mean the players, which is of course the profession, but the guys doing like color commentary and stuff, right? Like yeah. this is another potential career path for people who are interested in broadcast journalism or whatever is actually doing that for a career, which didn't exist in, you know, back when I started doing this. So, and because when you listen to these guys, they're really skilled at it. You know, I mean, I know you guys know this, um, and I mean, it, it's it's certainly it seems hard to do. I have a lot of respect for it to be able to follow the match, comment on it for people who are who are watching. You know, just following. Here's one thing I couldn't figure out: how are, who's deciding when when these when these are going on, like which character to focus on or wh where to go on so the that's map. All and done all that. through. It, isn't the camera system done through AI? There's two. Please? There's two ways. So in League of Legends, Legends specifically, um, they use uh, two folks and the AI. Okay, so there is something AI. called the directed camera, but then they also have an observer who's kind of watching everything, and then they have another observer who can like rewind and do all of the replays and stuff. So they use they use multiple individuals to make okay. sure that they're able to deliver the best shot. But then mm -hmm. I think they can do stuff like take every gamer's stream if they wanted to. Like there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of different things. It's one of the benefits of having the games. developers in, in charge of the stream is they can build those tools in the game. You know, it, it's such mm -hmm. a foreign concept for all these other esports because they're all third parties running a tournament off of a game they can't control, at least code-wise, right? Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. why I think League of Legends is is always going to kind of be one up on everyone else because they can just, one day they can be like, you know, we should put this in the game. The next day it's done. It's not, hey, we should email them to put this in the game. Let's see if it goes through their billion checklist and, mm -hmm. and whatever to see if it actually makes it in the game. The, the, so entire, I, the entire thing is genius. Those guys are just geniuses 
Yeah. And then my my big question is like, how are they making all their money? Because clearly they're making a ton of money. It's all through right? people buying shit, man. Like, yeah. it that that's why that whole like free to play thing works because people go and watch the season three finals. They see some hero doing really well. Ten minutes later, they're on League yeah. of Legends buying that hero for five bucks. I see. Yeah. And that's what. I mean, that's why they so really far like, I haven't had to pay a dime, right? I mean, I. Yeah. It's like Andy Crest Saga, which I'm. Sadly, admitting I keep playing, <laughs> I'm determined to never give them one dime. You know, yeah. that's my, that's the meta game for me. Is I'm going to beat you without giving you a dime. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that that <laughs> entire system is is incredibly fascinating to me. Like I, I could sit there and talk just about all of the amazing things that they've done that reinforce someone to want to play that game more and how they like. How they teach you that the first time you die to a tower, you realize that that thing's fucking scary as shit and you never want to go near it. And that's like one of the first things you learn that mm -hmm. is so smart that it keeps you from moving forward and you realize that this is my place right now in the game. This is what I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Like, right. Yeah, I, I had to learn by experience that actually just farming creeps was sort of an important task. Right. I thought when I was doing that, I was sort of wasting my time and not actually playing the real game, which was killing the other champions. And then I learned that that was like a big part of the strategy, right? So you had yeah. to do a lot of farming. Um, and, and even just yeah. in terms of the money, I know I'm telling you guys everything you know. No, no, I'm, no, a, no, no. I'm a noob. I didn't know. It's, no, it's, it's a, actually it's cool to hear this perspective. Trust me. Because... It's completely addicting. I mean, it really is. I mean, it, it, it got to where I would just have to warn my wife, like, you know, like, <laughs> hold off on dinner. <laughs> I mean, it's really kind of the old days of like WoW when I was super into WoW and EverQuest before that. Yeah. Uh, and we used to get in the biggest fights because, you know, it would be like time for a raid or whatever. And I'd be in a guild and like these were, you know, you have a responsibility when you're in a guild, right? Like you can't you can't let them down. If you're the DPS guy, you got to be there at four o'clock on Sunday. Like that was promised. the worst and best feeling about WoW that you. Yeah, right. Something like that. But that you were fucking committed, no matter you what. You were committed. Yeah, you and had if to do you it. Do it. You would get you shit on constantly. You were a dick, and you and you kind of deserved it, right? Because everyone was counting <laughs> on you. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I would tell my wife, okay, you know, Sunday four o'clock, we're doing a raid. So like, you know, I won't be able to have dinner till like six thirty or seven, and then inevitably, you know, people don't show up. Like the raid would always start like an hour later than everybody said. Then it would take longer, and you know, it, now it's like seven thirty or eight, and my wife's like, you know, coming into the room going like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> it's we're starving. Time, and, and and I would and I would feel like, and I would say like, I can't, I can't quit, I can't. Like if I quit. These 12 people are going to be so mad at me. Like, I have to finish. <laughs> and she's like, you don't even know them. They're Dude, total strangers. And we're your family. Yeah, Come I have fucking dinner. I had the same with my parents. They were like, what the fuck? Get off the computer. <laughs> like, no, mom, I got to kill You don't so understand. Much. This is my responsibility. This is my job here. I got, I'm DPS. Yep. Yeah, it was a weird argument to have, you know? Because you're like, That's what so would weird. happen if you just disconnected? You know, yeah, they don't even know who you are. They're going to kick you. They're going to take all the shit in your guild bank. Like, it's That's like, right. hold on. Maybe maybe she don't realize what's on the exactly. line here. Like Ooh, Life or death, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We've got like five minutes until we got to take our break. So is there any other games you wanted to talk about uh, before we uh, move on to the break and then our news? I'm just curious. Did, did either of you play Metro Last Light at all? I did. I played the original. I started. I only got like half an hour in. So I, the entire reason I'm playing the game is completely vain. I, I ended up buying this incredibly overpriced graphics card, and I was like, well, let's play a game that can actually like hurt this graphics card and not just get demolished and run 140 FPS. Uh, so it, it gets like 50 FPS. I'm very, I guess, proud of that. But I can't – this game looks incredible. Like that is an amazing-looking game. And the the way that they use kind of graphics to really – and I hate this. It, it's I hate atmospheric. I hate that word. I hate immersive. Why? Why? I, hate, I just and they're so fucking overused. But this game truly like sucks you into the world of post-apocalypse wherever they're at, like Europe, so Russia. So it's got good immersion. Uh, one might say that. <laughs> <laughs> might say that. You can't avoid it. Yeah, you can't. You totally can't. But it. I just blown away by how good that game looks at all times. There's never a dull moment in that game in terms of what you're looking at or a is, conversation going on behind you that you're mildly interested in. Is it um it, so you know Metro uh, the first Metro is kind of like 
you know, kind of a thrilling, scary FPS. It had this sort of on rails feeling to it many times. I didn't play the first one, yeah. Did so. this game? Is it similar? Or is it just sort of like a cinematic FPS as you go through? Like, there's not much room for we're going this way, or we're going this way, or we're doing this, or we're doing that. Kind of, kind of like, pushes you forward. There are there are little bits where you'll hear something. Uh, like a, a woman crying over in the side, or or someone trying to kind of uh, be aggressive with her, and you can you can choose to go off and and do that, or you can just keep going straight or going down the path. Um, I don't I don't necessarily mind the fact that it is kind of linear in that. Yeah, sense. I didn't mind it either. I know a lot of people had a problem with, it, but I was like, it's a cine- it's an experience, you yeah, know. Like it's totally. I'm not gonna go back and play it again. So whatever, totally. take me on the ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the one thing that that. I do not like about that game, and I, I do not have a fear of spiders. I, I'm not, I don't have arachnophobia or anything, but that game, the animations that they put on these little spiders that are just like sitting in these webs and they're constantly like jittering back and forth. And then all of a sudden, this giant fucking spider comes up out of nowhere because the game is like, it's completely dark around you at all times. And you can hear these things like going around you 360 degrees, and you're like, where's he gonna come out? There's holes in the wall and everything. And they pop out. It's fucking scary sometimes, man. <laughs> I'm like freaking out because I just see these tiny little spiders off in the corner, and I hear something kind of scurrying around in the background. I don't know where it's gonna man, come out. It's these moments where I wish I live in the same house as JP so I could go to like Michael's Fuck and me. buy some of that like, yeah. you know, webbing stuff <laughs> and some plastic spiders and just like Kind of yeah. toss him in there when he's it, playing. This is why people will never play the Oculus Rift around you, Weep. <laughs> <laughs> that asshole. <laughs> that is fucking uh, with people when they can't see any. They're going to be playing a horror game, and you'll just come up and, like, bump into them, and they'll shit their <laughs> pants because they're so freaked out. <laughs> the spiders. Yeah. Right. So I've been playing Metro Last Light. I'll, I'll definitely finish that game on stream. Uh, and then last night, for some reason, I built, booted up Guild Wars 2. And five hours Sorry. later, I realized it was, like, yeah. 4 a.m., <laughs> It's like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm That's so that. random when you said it that. is completely it random. Is. That's pretty random. It is yeah. random. Well, I've been. I forgot the big. The big one I forgot about was GTA Five, of course. Mm. So. And are you You're, liking that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I am. Okay. There, I, I think there's things about convincing. it that are. There's things about it that are awesome, like. Awesome. The city is incredible. Like, uh-huh. You know, I grew up in L.A. and, and just yeah. driving around. It's just amazing what they did. The technology there is great. The switching between characters is some of the coolest shit I've ever seen. Like Love it. every that satellite thing, it never gets old the way it switches back and forth. And, and, and so oh. many ingenious touches, like when you go into another character, like you're always sort of in, in the middle of a scene. Like oh, he's yeah. Doing, you know, that stuff is so great. But the reason I hesitated is this because I feel like it's a very cons- for them it's very conservative. I don't mean politically, but like gameplay wise, uh, it's yes. like you know it's like okay, it's now it's this kind of mission, now it's this kind of mission, and the missions are fun. Like don't get me wrong, like I I, I I'm gonna finish it. I like it, but I feel like at this point in their career, Rockstar. They're so good at what they do. They're obviously geniuses, and they have so much money they can spend on these things that I wish they would just push it a little more in terms of like what what you do in terms of gameplay. The world is amazing. It's great. But like the actual missions and the gaming, I, I just wanted a little more variety. It was like, okay, well, now I got to chase this guy. Now I got to race this guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I, I, it is GTA three, which was GTA four, which is now GTA five on just a larger scale, right? That's the I, I kind of consider all those games to be one and the same for the most part. The only reason I kept playing was for the character switching and for the three characters that I was like, that I was like funny. these characters because yeah. I'm with you, Jeff. Like I didn't finish four because I got tired of driving anywhere. I you know, I think I think Three was probably or San Andreas was probably the last one that I actually had, had played through. So it was weird that I was still being compelled to go through, but I was feeling it. I was feeling that monotony that exists. And you know, my buddies were like, "Oh, you didn't do any of the the question marks," and I'm like, "Fuck no! I would have yep. never finished this didn't game. Wouldn't have happened. Yeah. It's like yeah. story, story, story. Go. And at least the story like yeah. mixed it up." But it was it's still it. the same formula, and I do right. agree with that. And I do yeah. hope, because I like those games. I like their storytelling. Mm-hmm. I like what they can do. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm looking for yeah. that. 
I'm looking a little that, deep. The next step. Step. You want him to, and they do that in their other games, which is interesting. Like Red Dead Redemption was brilliant. That was my God, favorite game, game of good. that year. <laughs> Bully, right? So the non GTA games are where they push it more, and you you would just wish they would sort of apply that. I don't know if it's that they feel like okay, well. This is our flagship franchise, and people expect this kind of gaming. So we're kind of that Call of Duty this. effect, where yeah, knows what it is. Let's not change too much. Yeah, because it won't sell. I mean, and again, like in terms of GTA, in terms of the look and the feel and the city and all that, it's mind blowing. It's amazing, great. dude! It is amazing. Yeah, yeah, uh, That's good. it was really great. So, all right, so let's take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about some new stuff and. I think we're going to get a chance to open up the phone lines, maybe got some questions for Jeff, uh, or you just want to talk about anything going on in the gaming world right now, we'll make that happen for you. So guys, don't go away. We'll be back with more 8-Bits, our second hour when we return after this.